All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So thank you all again for joining us today. My name is Christopher Jammer. I am the Regional Account Manager for Arashi Rehab Centers here in our Central Texas offices. Um, and today we have with us Dr. Sean Small, who's going to be actually bringing you the content of the presentation today. So just to go over some housekeeping things, as we always do at the beginning of the presentation, as you all saw, whenever you were admitted into the, the session, your microphones were muted and your cameras were off. That is so that we can cut down on any of the bandwidth so that we can make sure to get you the information as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Um, if you have any specific questions or general questions about the content that you would like to ask us, you're more than welcome to utilize the chat function to send those questions over to myself or Dr. Small, and we can get those answers for you. Also, as we always do, uh, we ask that you send over your first name, last name, and your employee EIN number in the chat function so that we can make sure that you get all the wellness credit from your wellness connect from your wellness uh, per people with Austin ISD. So if you're unfamiliar with the Rossi or never heard of us before, we're a healthcare provider group that specializes in treating soft tissue injuries. That's anything from your head to your toes as long as it's not a broken bone, a fracture within the bone or a full thickness tear that's gonna require surgery. It's going to be within our wheelhouse. So not only do we treat those things in office, we also like to do what we call these wellness talks or pre-act talks where we talk about different conditions that come into our offices just to help you be preventative and proactive within your health. And today we're going to talk about a series of injuries within the shoulder that Dr. Small sees coming to his offices pretty frequently. Um, so before we actually get into the content, of course, we told you that if you have any general questions about the content of the presentation, you for sure can send those over via the chat. But if you have a really, really specific question that you would like to ask about an injury you might be dealing with or might something that you might not want to ask on a virtual platform, which we understand, in the top right hand corner of your screen on the different slides in the presentation, you're going to see a QR code and that's going to be a code that will give you access to what we call our VIP chats. This is a virtual injury and pain chat. It's free. It's no obligation to anybody to schedule. It's more so that you have a one on one time to chat with one of our doctors about anything that you might be dealing with or if you have any specific questions that you would like to ask um, Dr. Small or an Arosity provider in general. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Small to take you through the actual presentation. Thanks, Chris. All right, so as he was saying, uh, I see a lot of shoulder injuries in my office and I guess you guys probably know just working at computers, doing modern life type of things, your shoulders can definitely take a beating um, from time to time, just depending on what you're doing, what your exercises are, um, and then just day-to-day -day activities um, that we see from uh, working at a computer, from driving, from sitting on your phone. There's a lot of different things. So we're going to show you some some of the common conditions that we see in the shoulder uh, in our offices, and then some tools that you can use to prevent those, uh, and then just kind of how we uh, approach that care. All right, so we're gonna go over today with the injuries, rotator cuff strain. You've probably heard of the rotator cuff, so we'll get in a little deeper on what that specifically is. Uh, shoulder impingement, uh, tendonitis, bursitis, arthritis. These are all terms that you probably have heard or researched when you've had shoulder pain. And so we can give you a little bit more of an expert's view. But as you can see, just from this muscle chart here, I mean, the shoulder's got a lot of complex uh, muscle and attachment points and bones in it. It doesn't just include the, the what you think of as the shoulder right here. So there's a lot more to it than um, we commonly think about. So um, it's a complex, like it says, a, a range, multiple joints, bones, ligaments, cartilage, bursa, which is kind of like a little sac, fluid filled sac that keeps you from um, getting that bone on bone type of pain. And then we've got tendons, muscles. Um, so as a whole, they call these the shoulder girdle. So it's just kind of like a complex of a combination of that anatomy. Um, and it's the most mobile joint in the body. You can move your shoulder in more ranges of motion than any other joint. Um, for that reason, it's a quite shallow joint as well. So it's prone to instability and injury as well. Um, some of the ranges of motion that we go through in the shoulder is adduction, which is cross body type of movement, 
abduction is coming up to the side like this, forward flexion coming forward, extension is reaching back like you're driving, reaching back behind yourself for something. Then you've got internal rotation, closing down that shoulder joint, external rotation, and then you can do something called circ circumduction, which is, you know, if you're doing throwing motion type of sports, circumduction is involved in bringing that overhead throwing motion around. So the shoulder can do a lot. It's, uh, it's very complex, and that's why we see so many different injuries for it. So here's a little bit of anatomy for the shoulder. So um, the shoulder also involves some of the, the muscles of the, um, there's an anterior part and a posterior part. So this is the back. So if you're looking at the shoulder blade region, so you've got your traps, deltoids, infraspinatus, teres minor. There's a lot of um, strange sounding muscles in this area, uh, but this kind of just illustrates just how complex and, and what we have to kind of look at when somebody comes in with a specific shoulder injury. So first we're gonna get into the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff is actually a combination of four separate muscles. And those muscles are your supraspinatus, which is gonna be up on the top of your shoulder, your infraspinatus, which is kind of on the back, a little bit below down on your shoulder blade, teres minor also on the back, and then you have the subscapularis muscle, which is, it's kind of up deep on the inside portion of the shoulder blade, a very often looked over and forgotten part of the rotator cuff, but nonetheless, very important in keeping your arm bone sucked in almost to your shoulder blade, which is your scapula. So it really, the, the, the rotator cuff stabilizes and keeps the shoulder strong and stable throughout many of our movements. So oftentimes these small muscles will be um, underused in day-to-day -day activity. And that's why we get so many injuries in this area. A lot of times it can also come from repetitive stress as well. So some of the signs and symptoms of a rotator cuff injury. Uh, as you see the baseball player here, you, I see a lot of throwing athletes that are gonna get injuries. So pain when they've stopped pitching, when you've stopped doing a specific activity, uh, when the shoulder cools down, so to speak. Um, increased pain at night, uh, especially if you're a side sleeper, you're gonna wanna avoid sleeping on the side that's injured, obviously. I always encourage my patients to sleep on their backs. Uh, I know it's hard to control what you're doing when you're unconscious and asleep at night, but uh, a lot of times that can exacerbate those, those signs and symptoms. Um, and then weakness with lifting, um, so rotating the arm, lifting heavy objects, you know, typical pain through most of your activities when you're exercising. And then uh, I do get a lot of questions about the, the popping and cracking sounds uh, that come within the shoulder joint. And a lot of times people are very concerned with these, uh, these sounds. Uh, and I try to tell people if they're not injured and, you know, they feel that they hear that noise within the joint, that's usually not anything to really be worried about. Now, if the popping and cracking sensation is painful, that's something to be more concerned with. Um, so some of the causes of these types of injuries, um, acute, this can be like a specific trauma, say you fell on an outstretched hand and caught yourself and felt a pop or something like that. Uh, poor posture, that's more of a chronic issue, working at a computer, you know, slumping on the couch while you're working from home. Uh, and then we go on to the overuse uh, injuries, which can be more of the, the athletes that I see, the throwing motion, the weightlifters, uh, sports like uh, softball, baseball, um, tennis even. I can see a lot of the racket sports that um, they get injured from these kinds of motions. All right, moving on to impingement. So impingement is a condition where the bursa and or the rotator cuff tendons are uh, trapped or compressed. A good way for me to tell if that you have a shoulder impingement um, is that you have, we'll go through a range of motion like internal rotation or elevation and it'll be a pinching type of sharp pain. Um, so some of the contributing factors of this can be poor posture. Um, limited strength and flexibility. A lot of times people who work from a computer 
um, are gonna have a lot of tightness on the front of their shoulder because we're always just rounded forward when we're sitting. And so the spine, the orientation of the spine can also contribute to that. Because if you're just closing in and rounding forward all the time, you're gonna have chronic tightness in the chest muscles and also um, create limited range of motion. Um, the tightness on the front can cause weakness in other areas as well, limiting your joints movement in the shoulder. Also, poor scapular control. The scapula is the shoulder blade on the back. And so if you have a hard time controlling and stabilizing that scapula, the space um, narrowing of the space in the shoulder joint can cause limited range of motion and cause injuries in turn. So there's a lot of different factors that can contribute to impingement, but it's a lot of things you'll see like themes here with rotator cuff impingement, other shoulder injuries that are, you know, habitual things that can compound over time and cause injury. So some of the signs and symptoms of shoulder impingement, uh, sharp pain in the front of the shoulder, like I was saying earlier, when I take patients through a certain range of motion and they get this sharp shooting pain, that can be a clear sign of impingement. Pain with overhead movements, throwing uh, a ball, throwing um, in any kind of sport really. And then overhead serves too with uh, like a tennis player, for example. I see a lot of pickleball players too recently. I, I guess that's a big thing in Austin these days too. So we've had injuries from that as well with uh, shoulder impingement. And then pain in the back of the shoulder as well. This cannot just be confined to the front. It can be in the back and that can be the cause of that poor posture, poor movement patterns. So at Arasi, we look at how you're moving, uh, not just where the pain is. So I'll take athletes and uh, regular people just like through the range of motion where they're feeling the pain. And we can see if there's a dysfunction in just how they're engaging those, that shoulder uh, girdle complex. And also you go back to the overuse. So repetitive tasks, especially overhead. So I see it with a lot of weightlifting athletes that are doing overhead press. Um, we'll see injuries like that too. I, I also see a lot of construction type workers that'll be doing things overhead, electricians, what have you, and they'll get these types of injuries from always having to lift up to do overhead activities. All right, bursitis. So I mentioned earlier that the bursa is, it's this fluid filled sac that there's several of them located throughout the shoulder complex. And they're almost like a, a shock absorber, or a, a cushion for your movement through your shoulders for the, the anatomy, the bones, the ligaments, the muscles. So bursitis is inflammation of this bursa. Uh, it's typically an overuse type of injury. Um, so it could be the symptoms of something else going on as well. So a lot of times it's not just a cut and dry issue. We'll see bursitis combined with impingement or a rotator cuff type of injury. Um, and so with the bursa, there's six of them uh, located throughout the shoulder. A lot of times I'll see most commonly bursitis in the uh, anterior front part of the shoulder but that doesn't mean that it can't be in other regions that these other bursa are just depending on your activities. So some of the signs and symptoms of bursitis, it's gonna be pain that's worse at the beginning of the day. Um, and it usually gets better as you start to move and warm it up. Um, it can be a constant type of aching sensation. Um, uh, very uncommonly I'll see swelling, but it does occur and then when I go through and feel the area that's actually injured, um, it'll be very sensitive to the touch. That's a, a really clear sign of bursitis. It's just pinpointed pain um, right where I'm uh, kind of examining the area. And then um, raising the arm up overhead, it kind of closes down the area where you're gonna have these bursa, especially on the front. And so when you're compressing that area, that inflammation is gonna come out, that pain signal is gonna be sent, and it's gonna be uncomfortable when we go through that test. Um, again, the causes of bursitis can be like the other ones, poor posture, repetitive stress, um, weightlifting, 
specific throwing sports or racket sports where you're using the same joint on a repetitive basis. Um, a lot of these things are, are a reoccurring uh, theme in these kinds of injuries. All right, tendonitis. So what is a tendon? So tendons are cartilage fibrous attachments on the end of your muscle that attaches it to the bone. So think of it as an anchor point for your muscle. So when these areas are inflamed, it typically um, can cause a lot of pain. And this is often caused by, again, repetitive stress where there's uh, an irritation of this tendinous attachment. So uh, the supraspinatus tendon is probably the most common along with the biceps tendon. The supraspinatus tendon is at the very top of the shoulder and it allows you to bring your arm up like this. And so tendonitis can commonly occur there, especially with people who are doing say swimming or baseball, for example, throwing type of sports. And then the biceps tendon as well is attached right here on the front of the shoulder. Uh, that's a very common area to have that injury as well. So most commonly it's a micro trauma in the tendon. So if you do something enough times in a, a dysfunctional way, you're gonna get irritation in that tendon uh, and it may not uh, be apparent at first, but this is a long-term repetitive type of stress injury. So a lot of people will come in and ask me, well, what, what caused this? You know, nothing, like I didn't have a specific trauma or anything. And I'll often explain to them that it's like, it's a compounding effect of small things over a long period of time, small little habits that, you know, it's the straw that breaks the camel's back after a certain amount of time. So these imbalances can cause um, poor movement patterns and the tendon just, it gets overworked essentially. All right, some of the signs and symptoms. Um, so you typically get more of a dull, achy type of pain that's difficult for you to specifically pinpoint. Uh, it can be like, feel like it's deep. It can feel like it's jumps around a little bit. Uh, that's typically more indicative of a tendonitis. It's not that pinpoint pain that you see with a, a bursitis or a rotator cuff type of injury. Uh, the pain can radiate into the upper arm, possibly into the chest, the anterior chest, into the pec muscle, uh, especially if it's a biceps tendonitis. Um, and then pain can be worse at night when you um, cool down, when you're relaxing at the end of the day and everything's kind of still, a lot of times that irritation becomes more apparent because you're not getting the blood flow, you're not moving it as much. So stiffness, mild swelling, and tenderness are all also signs and symptoms. So again, the, the cause is poor posture, overuse and overloading uh, with repetitive Dress. A lot of times I'll see these kinds of injuries in um, weightlifters and also the, the throwing, the, the racket sports, um, even golfers, tennis players, that kind of thing. And then age can be a factor, especially if somebody, uh, an older person gets into a sport or activity after you know, not being as active for a while. A lot of times I'll see these kinds of injuries um, when they start to get more active and transition into more exercise. So a lot of times people who maintain an active lifestyle throughout their life, we don't see it quite as much, but it can occur with age as well. All right, osteoarthritis. So arthritis, um, we hear it uh, in a lot of different forms. Osteoarthritis is just chronic inflammation in the joint. Um, this can cause changes in the bones, deterioration in the connective tissue, a lot of times you'll hear about like specific, like a bone spur, for example, that's kind of related to osteoarthritis. So um, wearing down of the cartilage around our joints, um, our joints have protective cartilage, it's very tough, but um, if you're not moving in a proper way and over time, it can wear down and you get that bone on bone effect that can be quite painful. So some of the signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis can be stiffness, pain, discomfort, the entire joint. So it'll be like all through the shoulder joint, um, really just feels like it's painful with any kind of movement. Uh, you'll feel a stiffness and an inability to move through your entire range of motion. And then tenderness, swelling, uh, redness can occur as well. 
some of the causes of osteoarthritis, uh, wear and tear, uh, old injuries. That's typically where I see most osteoarthritis type injuries. If you say like had an old rotator cuff injury or um, some kind of joint um, dislocation, for example, or a chronic dislocation, uh, popping your shoulder out a lot, we'll see arthritis in there. Um, age and family history can affect it as well. We'll see more uh, inflammatory systemic processes like rheumatoid arthritis that have more family issues, but not as much with osteoarthritis. All right, so we're gonna get into some things you can do to prevent these kinds of injuries. So you don't have to come see me and, and get uh, worked on. So we'll take you through some of that. So there's really three things that we rely on at Arosti with our uh, rehab sessions and mobility, that's self myofascial release, think foam rolling, lacrosse balls, and then stretching, that's gonna help you, you know, get some blood flow in the area. And then the strength exercises are really what's going to give you that long-term uh, resolution of an injury. So preventing these injuries, uh, a lot of it starts with your posture. Uh, this diagram kind of shows how like poor posture, say this guy's like looking at his computer or looking down at his phone. You're going to see like that rounding of the spine is going to cause the pec muscles um, to tighten down. And so it's just the you know, a compounding effect of those little habits that you don't even think about throughout the day when you're sitting at your desk or looking at your phone, uh, it can really cause some issues with uh, these kinds of injuries. All right, so thoracic foam rolling. This is a really good first step in any kind of, you don't think about the shoulder when you're doing this area, but this is on the back of this, the scapula and you're gonna get quite a bit of good mobility and, and loosen up that posterior shoulder when you're doing thoracic foam rolling. And lacrosse ball, you guys are probably familiar with lacrosse balls. Um, so we use those in our office. They're a little bit more dense. A lot of people use tennis balls, but as you can see in the picture here, she's loosening up her pec region. Uh, the lacrosse ball gets in there a lot deeper than a uh, foam roller can or you know just stretching it out. Uh, this will help bring blood flow to that really tight pec area and as you saw in the diagram earlier this is an area we need to try to open up. Um, loosening up the pec can open up the chest allow you to have better posture and it also sets that shoulder joint back in a more proper um, orientation rather than rolling it forward. And again, she's just moved on to another area, the supraspinaeus, which is part of that rotator cuff area that we discussed at the beginning. So she's just leaning back against the wall, uh, just letting that ball kind of do its job. And I always tell my patients to kind of keep moving and let that ball roll against the wall. And you can feel and find those more tight areas and kind of loosen it up. We'll even in include a little bit of uh, shoulder movement as you roll that ball under there, but this is a really good, you know, first step in kind of loosening up the area that's tight. And the chest stretch. So a lot of times I'll have people grab a doorway and open up their chest this way, um, but you can do it against a wall. You can do it, I mean, you can even do it like at your desk, you can just like open your chest up, but really like anchoring it somewhere like against a wall or something is really going to help you kind of rotate your body and really feel a good stretch all the way. You can feel it all the way from your bicep into your pec and then looking to your opposite shoulder kind of helps open up that area further. And even if I have a patient with one, say they have a right-sided shoulder injury, we're going to do it on both sides because I want them to see the difference. Say I can see what a healthy shoulder feels like compared to my injured one. And I want to get that injured shoulder like this other side is being healthy. And so we always do things bilaterally to compare from side to side, especially for stretching. All right. And seated the thoracic rotation. So it's pretty much um, this is a really good one for especially you desk uh, workers. Uh, you can just rotate back to the opposite side. And you can see that she's kind of anchoring her leg down there. 
And that's just a good point to um, just get a better mobility and stretch in that area. You may even get a few pops in your low back when you do this. That's okay. Don't be worried about that. That's just kind of those joints loosening up and getting some more motion in them. And a lot of times I like to take deep breaths when I'm doing these things. So on the exhales, you'll find that you can come a little bit farther through that range of motion. And this is just a really good stretch for not just the shoulder, but also the low back and thoracic area. All right, arm circles. So these are kind of what you think of when you're doing like say a warm up for a workout, um, just a simple arm uh, circle and you can do it backwards, forwards. And if you do these for a few minutes, you're gonna get some soreness in that area. I mean, you're gonna feel it pretty quick if you do these for more than a minute or so. So you can go like bigger circles, smaller circles, and just kind of um, feel what you're feeling through the shoulder joint. You know, if you have a shoulder injury, this may not be super comfortable, uh, but it's pretty indicative of a shoulder injury if you, if you can't do this without, you know, having some pain. And, and take it through, like I said, the big circles, the small circles, and um, you might get a little popping and cracking through there, but that's, that's pretty normal, uh, pretty um, normal, even a healthy shoulder joint, as long as it's not painful to you. All right, the Bruger. So this is used with a band, and what you wanna do with this is you wanna set your shoulders back, like you're in really good posture when you're doing these. And as you can see, she's just bringing that back and you're going through external rotation of the shoulder. So what I don't want my patients to do when they're using this band and pulling it apart is to snap it back when they come back in. I always tell them, squeeze the shoulder blades together and then let that band, don't let it overtake you. You control the band all the way back in and then you're gonna come right back out. And you can do these without a band too, um, you can just kind of feel how that range of motion is. You should be able to get nearly to 90 degrees. Um, so from here to here, you want to almost have your arms, you know, paralleling the wall behind you if you have full range of motion. And a lot of times, you know, people who have a lot of tightness up in their front of their shoulder and their pecs, it's going to be hard to get back like that. So this is a really good one to practice. And it also strengthens your muscles of your back that will help you have better posture. All right, so Dr. Small, a question that we always usually get whenever talking about the mobility tools that we use at Arosti, are there any contraindications as to why you would stop using a lacrosse ball or foam roller? Yeah, so if you have, um, for lacrosse ball or foam roller, if you have some kind of, for example, swelling, or if it is way painful to do the lacrosse ball or the foam roller, especially if it's painful to foam roll in the area, like I would definitely back off of that. Um, if you've had a recent uh, trauma, a recent surgery, a recent um, injury, I definitely like err on the side of caution when it comes to jamming a ball into your shoulder. I would do more mobility stuff and just like move it around in, it, in its free form without hitting it down with the ball. Um, that would, that would be probably the biggest contraindication if you have some kind of swelling trauma, uh, if it's very painful. And another question about the lacrosse ball foam roller. Yep. From your general recommendation, how long would you say to use a foam roller? Would you say maybe three minutes, four minutes, five, or would you keep it at shorter integral time frames? Yeah, yeah. I usually recommend like one to three minutes. Like if you time it out, three minutes is a pretty long time. And so that's like, uh, you know, one minute of thoracic foam rolling, maybe another minute of lacrosse ball in one area, another minute in the other area. So you're moving around. You don't wanna just sit there for like 10 minutes or whatever and like foam roll and lay on it forever. Like you wanna get up and keep things moving. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not really like a prolonged all day type of thing because a lot of times you can get soreness or bruising just from overdoing that. Thank you. So a question that we just got put in the chat, do you suggest doing mobility activities daily or maybe just a few times a week? I, I'd suggest daily, especially if you're injured um, or have like 
chronic tightness, chronic uh, shoulder pain, um, I would say incorporate these types of things into your daily routine. If you're if you're doing exercise, especially like you know three, five, six days a week, if you're a regular exerciser, or even if you're doing different areas of the body. I think it's good to do go through these uh, mobility motions just to keep things moving. Um, they're definitely not going to hurt you. That's not something that like these aren't meant to be a workout. They're meant to be more uh, form driven and, and more of a daily habit pre-workout type of thing. Thank you for that answer. So if you guys have any more questions for sure shoot us over into the chat. But just to kind of go a little bit more so we can get through the rest of the presentation. So on the screen, as you can see, are basically the way at Arasi that we hold ourselves accountable to all of our patients. So different providers like Dr. Small, we've seen over a thousand patient cases since we've been in, in existence with Arasi. And on average, we only see our patients about three to four times due to the total pain resolution. So some people use this as a first option, but as you can see at the bottom, sometimes people use a ROSTI as a second option. Maybe you went to, maybe you've already received an MRI or an X-ray. You might've gone to a different specialist or you particularly could have done some prior physical therapy or traditional chiropractic work. That's something that we're gonna make sure number one, whenever you come to is that you are in the right place and that it is something we can take care of. So our providers go through a very extensive injury assessment to look at exactly where the source of your pain is coming from. And because of that, Generally, about 88.3% of all of our patients that come into our offices will report a full recovery from the injury that they've come in from. So, of course, we like to say that we're not necessarily a one-stop shop, and there are going to be a very small percentage of people that we can't help physically, but we always like to make sure that we get you into the right place. So 99.5% of all of our patients will recommend us to their family and friends. And today, Dr. Small talked specifically about different injuries within the shoulder, so your rotator cuff, bursitis, some tendonitis, and things of that sort. But we see conditions of all types, whether it's something acute, like maybe a headache, or maybe like an ankle sprain, or plantar fasciitis, or it could be something chronic that you've been dealing with for days, months, weeks, or even years on end, maybe something like sciatic-like pain, or neck pain, or maybe some heel spurs, or things of that sort. So, and lastly, we are in a network benefit for all of Austin ISDs uh, and the health plan members and dependents. You don't need a referral to go see any of our providers, and we have over 30 locations in the Austin area. Dr. Sean Small will be moving into his new location at Arosti Far West off of Far West Boulevard in North Austin, but all of our clinics are currently still open, and we're making sure that we're adhering to the recommendations of the CDC to make sure that the environment is not only safe for our treatment teams, but also for our patients if they come in. If you have any other questions which, or would like to schedule an appointment, you could either visit the website at arasi.com or call the 1-800 number on the bottom of your screen. So if you guys have any questions, again, shoot those over to us, but if not, we will give you some of your time back and we hope that you enjoyed the presentation and enjoy the rest of your day.